Uh, welcome to the reading group. I'm Hardik, and I'm going to introduce Ellen Farmer to you guys. And uh, just a second. Yeah. So I'll be covering the related works, the limitations, Ellen Farmer's advantages, and how and why it works better. Then Ayush will uh, walk you guys through the entire model architect model architecture and explain the net bits of it and a comparison with uh, other mentioned works. So yeah, next slide, please. Uh, the task here is to segment and label different organs captured in the CT scans. And the authors argue that transformers that are the go-to model for exploiting long-term dependencies, particularly in the NLP domain, do have found some attention in the vision-based applications, but haven't been able to fully explore and employ their core. That is the self-attention mechanism. To help atypical uh, convolutional neural nets to overcome the inherent shortcomings of uh, spatial inductive bias. Since these are uh, 3D volumetric patches, the dependencies lit over a dimension of the patch, of a 3D patch. And though the recent transformer-based segmentation approaches use transformer, they don't uh, do it in an optimal manner. These approaches treat transformers as assisting modules to help encode the global context into the convolutional representations. These approaches treat convolutions as main bodies and on top of which uh, the transformers are further applied to capture the long-term dependencies. However, such design does cause a problem. That is the advantage of uh, having a transformer in the model. It is not fully exploited. Compared to convenience, uh, transformers re uh, relax the inductive bias of locality, making them more capable of dealing with uh, non-local -lo interactions and just to provide some more context on which we can uh, build on later I think you are not audible anymore yeah hello guys am I audible yeah. Yeah, it's okay. okay, fine. I'm really sorry. I have a rather patchy connection. So yeah, uh, what I was saying was, yeah. So let's start with self-attention again. So self-attention at a high level of abstraction would be a mechanism that looks at an input sequence and uh, decides at each step that which other parts of the sequence are important. And this set of steps over time builds the global context throughout the model over a series of sequences. And for spatial bias of locality, it is a type of inductive bias in convenience that assumes a certain type of uh, spatial structure present in the data. And then with subsequent layers, the information that is passed on is limited by the locality and downsampling. You can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, so let's talk about the work that has been previously done in this domain. There have been a number of approaches trying to apply transformers to the field of medical image analysis. Uh, but first, let's talk about not another unit. NN unit is currently the best performing fully through and through convolutional biomedical image segmentation network. It is an ensemble of the lately prevalent unit architecture in biomedical, segment, uh, biomedical image segmentation tasks. And the architecture contains a contraction path, also called as the encoder, which is used to capture the context in the image. The encoder is just a traditional stack of uh, convolutional max pooling layers. The second path is a symmetric but expanding path, also called as the decoder, which uses transposed uh, convolutions. Thus, it is an end-to-end -end fully convolutional network that contains only convolutional layers and doesn't contain any dense layers because of which it can uh, accept uh, any image sizes. Yeah. And the NN uh, unit architecture 
has an automated pipeline for uh, data pre-processing, data augmentation, post-processing. And with experimentation, uh, we find that the NN unit works better with the 2D window patches over the complete 3D volumetric patches. Yeah, next slide, please. Moving on to trans unit. Trans unit explores the potential of transformers in the context of uh, medical image segmentation. Here, the transformer uh, were added to convenience for the first time for uh, image segmentation. And in trans unit, the convenience act as the feature extractors and transformers help encode the global context. In fact, a major uh, feature of trans unit and most of its followers is to treat convenience as main bodies on top of which transformers are further applied to capture the long-term dependencies. However, such characteristic does cause a problem as one or two layer transformers aren't enough to entangle long-term dependencies with just uh, convolutional representations. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay, uh, the next approach uh, capture, uh, yeah, to address this issue actually, some researchers started to use transformers as the main stem of uh, segmentation models. So Karimi et al. introduces a convolution free medical image segmentation in, uh, using transformers, which for the first time introduced a convolution free segmentation model by forwarding flattened image representation directly to the transformer, whose outputs were then reorganized into 3D tensors to align with the segmentation mass. That is by directly flattening raw pixels and applying 1D pre-processing to create a feature set to build the model later on. Yeah, next slide, please. Uh, the next approach captured convenience features into transformers, like Swin Transformer, a hierarchical transformer whose representation is computed with shifted windows, as in the, your normal convolution layer. And uh, the shifted uh, window scheme brings greater efficiency by limiting self attention competition to non overlapping local windows. So, Swin unit uh, utilized these hierarchical transformer blocks to construct the encoder and decoder within, again, a unit-like architecture. Next slide, please. Uh, now let's discuss the limitations of uh, approaches that we have discussed so far. So the first one would be, say, advantages of transformers are not fully exploited. That is the core or the crux of uh, transformers, the self-attention mechanism. Second would be that just a couple layers of transformers are not enough to entangle long-term dependencies of such complex uh, medical image data. And uh, there is a need to interleave attention layers to carry forward the needed information through the layers. And since convolutional representations contain precise uh, spatial information, that information is lost over uh, a set of multiple images, like over multiple 2D windows sliced from a 3D volumetric patch. Yeah, next slide, please. Again, most approaches treat the convenience as just feature extractors to generate a feature map and then have overlay transformer to help encode the global context into it. Compared to convenience, transformers actually relax the inductive bias of locality as they capture dependencies over uh, long sequences, making them more capable of de dealing with uh, non-local interactions. And hence, they ought to be used uh, alongside the convolutional nets. And next, please. Further, directly flattening raw pixels and applying 1D pre-processing doesn't provide a rich enough feature set to build the model on. And convenience, which are the go-to tool for image data as they capture the precise local features need to be incorporated along with the transformers. And this is where an informer comes in, which has an interleaved combination of convenience and self attention Yeah, next please. So now let's talk about the improvements that an informer brings to, uh, to this domain and why they work. The main contribution of an informer is its uh, hybrid stem where convolution and self-attention are interleaved to give a full play to both their uh, strengths, meaning the network benefits from the precise local information encoded by convenience and uh, from the long-term dependencies and global context encoded by the self-attention mechanism. Compared to these transformer based uh, stems, uh, an informer inherits the superiority of convolution in encoding the spatial information and the producing hierarchical uh, representation that help model object concepts at various scales. Yeah. Next, please. 
so uh, from the model's perspective it first puts a lightweight convolutional embedding layer ahead ahead of the transformer blocks instead of directly flattening raw uh, pixels and applying 1d preprocessing as you can see in the schematic the convolutional embedding layer encodes uh, precise pixel level spatial information and provides a low level yet uh, high resolution 3d feature set after the embedding block transformer and convolutional downsampling blocks are interleaved to fully entangle long term dependencies with high level and hierarchical object concepts which help improve the generalization and ability uh, and the uh, robustness of learned representations yeah so that was it and now guys ayush will talk you through the model architecture yeah you go ayush thanks thanks hardik so yeah uh, as we saw in the last slide the transformer block and the uh, convolutional layers were interleaved so as you can see here uh, the main architecture is distributed in two segments one is the encoder and one is the decoder in the encoder there we have a con based embedding block and the start and then we have interleaved transformers and con based down sampling similarly in the decoder we have con based up sampling and transformer blocks interleaved till we reach the expanding block so a little bit of detail for all of the blocks so, uh, an embedding block the first convolutional based embedding block contains four, four layers uh, four, four blocks of cons and then two by two sides stri and then a jru and the lower name of a uh, layer norm after every layer so by this they have created the embedding block and similarly as you can see it's for down sampling there con based on sampling and con based up sampling and expanding as well which are used uh, along with the transformer based blocks the living inside and we have the residual connection among the down sampling and up sampling layers so that we can get the data required for the up sampling from the down sampling layers and which in this shows that this architecture follows the unit based architecture so well, this is how they designed their architecture and to get a little bit more detail into the embedder and the transformer blocks uh, yeah, we can start with the embedder block so basically it takes the uh, image input of x and then it converts it to a high high dimensional tensor with this dimension h by 4 w by 4 and d by 2 where hwd were the dimensions of the uh, smaller volumes that they considered from the images so uh, suppose you have a uh about 1000 images of some x, uh, x cross y resolution of, of any snippet of your abdomen or some other scan and uh, then you can imagine them as a, a as a cube or a cuboid volume so here they they tried to create the volume smaller volumes uh, named as local volumes from that larger volume and among those local volumes they created uh, pass tokens after those so then they try to uh, use that to uh, uh, transverse over traverse over them in the conveyors and similarly so and so forth the uh, system is sequential in the transformer blocks uh, i'll get into the details in the mass later on in some later slides um so for the experimentation uh, this paper was mostly based on two data sets which one was synapse and other was ACTC, and they had to tune some parameters specifically for these two so that's what this is so this is the first one c which represents the sequence length of the uh, tensor that is pa being passed on from the embedding layer to the next so yeah 192 for synapse and 96 for ACTC, and so on and so forth so uh, then there comes the advantage of the convolution layers again which is to consider the pixel level special information and uh, another benefit that they used small size kernels instead of large size smaller size was there to reduce the computational complexity which i'll also explain further uh, coming to the transformer block uh, here comes the part of the uh, small kernel size so they took specific smaller kernels like for synapse they took a 4x like 4 cube uh, for, for, for the 4 cube and uh, for ACTC they took a 5 by 5 by 3 cube void so then they use that to uh yeah pass on the model to the transformer then that there are stats and they are also in the circuit as well so uh, i want to get into the math of it uh, how they were actually using the smaller kernels to reduce the computational complexity so uh there is a naive multi-head self-attestation method msa uh, which is stated as such. So here we see is the number of the patches and HWT were the dimensions of the local volumes 
if uh, you are just considering the local volumes and the uh, patch count, then uh, this would be the computational complexity of the whole model or a better layer. And uh, uh, if you try to uh, segregate it into smaller kernels and then include the dimensionality of that, then uh, this uh, term here would be expanded into this. And uh, since this, uh, the dimension of the kernels is uh, uh, marginally, uh, or sorry, it, it is a, a real, very small in comparison to the uh, local volume. So therefore uh, uh, we can see that uh, they have reduced the computational complexity by 98% 19% for sinus and ACDC data set respectively. To explain the mass a little bit more, I have taken an example here. So if you consider the uh, image size of uh, 1024 by 720 and you consider 600 images, uh, imagine a top to bottom view of uh, any snippet. And then you consider a local volume of 20 by 20. So that would give you an 8,000 uh, pixels in volume. And uh, take a pass size or a kernel size of four by fours. So that would give you a volume of 64. Oh, pixels. And if you consider this formula and uh, check the improvement here, then it would be just a percent change from the kernel's volume to the local volume, local patch volumes volume. So that would be around 98 or 99% as this claim already for these two data sets. So that's how they were able to reduce the complexity while keeping the uh, model and interleave and hybrid of uh, convolution and uh, transformers which gave them benefit of both. So yeah, explaining a little bit about the data set, there is the Sinex data set, which is actually a snippet of the abdomen region where we have a lot of organs, aorta, galbridus, spleen, and all of those listed here. So, and the second one is ACTC, which is a snippet of our heart. So we can use this data set for the segmentation challenge to segregate the left vertical, left right vertical, and myocardium, which is the uh, thick wall in between of them some images to yeah some images will be later on to refer to these data sets and uh, for the pre-processing and the training uh, a lot of pre-processing was required since uh, many images were really blurry and noisy so all of that was done uh, they were focused they were brightened up the contrast was adjusted and everything else whatever we do in the image based segmentation challenges and uh, for their system they tried they trained it over the geforce 2080s system so they had it trained locally and these are the uh, hyperparameters that they started before the trainings they trained it for about 1000 epochs and one epoch contained about 250 iterations so yeah it was a larger model uh, to give an insight on the data set uh, the synapse and acd services go well over 20 gigs uh, synapse is about 40 gigs i think and uh, yeah it would have taken more to train uh, these are the results of uh, separate mo uh, variable models which uh, deal with the uh, volume metric segmentation. And uh, as mentioned earlier, the NN unit uh, performed the best till now. Uh, so this is on the synapse data set, which is the abdominal one. So just try to segregate uh, the, or create the uh, edges around these segments, iota, calibrate and all the organs. And the scores that we see here are the dice scores, uh, which is just a, uh, area and overlaid areas uh, uh, percentage comparison between the ground truth and the predicted one so the higher the better uh, as you can see the unit is uh, performing best uh, within all of these columns most of the time and then uh, there comes the informer which uh, performed uh, uh, better than uh, to, uh, over the kidney and spleen and stomach so this was the result for the synapse one now is the visual representation of the synapse results. So for the ground truth, as you can see, these are all the different organs, the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, the gallbladder, and all of those. And uh, if you compare it with the unit and uh, an informer for every column, you can see the uh, an informer is performing slightly better than the other uh, unit, which was already the best in the market till now. And uh, Similarly, these are the images for the ACTC, which was the segregation of uh, uh, hearts, uh, uh, left article, left article, right article, and the that middle thick wall, which is represented as green here. So yeah, uh, NN unit is sometimes missing some of the uh, partitions of the organs here, and an informer is actually matching up with the ground truth. So it is really working well for this these two data sets.
and uh, uh, now from there uh, now from there introduced uh, uh, mechanics that they try to merge these two convolution and transformers like by introducing the layers so they did some investigation as well for some different experimentation uh, the first one is uh, when they try to uh, use the uh, neighboring concatenation for the convolution downsampling block so rather than uh, taking the interleaved ones which is the direct connection for the residuals so this would uh, leave out the uh, if they did the neighboring concatenation then they would not have gotten the uh, long range data that they were getting between the layers and even if you consider it from a 3d perspective it would miss out much more data from uh, if you move along this z axis then it would miss the data from that um, yeah, so it is doing better with the uh, without the neighboring combinations, and uh, similarly, when they try to add more transformer blocks, then uh, it was performing well. The glad battle, but the issue was then uh, it. Uh, so if you try to improve, in increase the transformer blocks, then uh, the details will be reduced because uh, convolution it will be convolution layers will be reduced in comparison to the transformer one. So it's kind of like. Uh, balance that they had reached up to for these two data sets and uh, similarly for the pre-trained so yeah they tried it with no pre-training and as we all know pre-training definitely helps for segmentation or the image based models so that's there on their uh, for investigation and on the conclusion yeah it is a it is a quite good uh, model if you want like since they enter leave since they interleave the main stem with using convolution and the self decision that is not for models. And uh, I think it is working quite well for uh, 3D segmentation challenges. Uh, if you have that kind of challenge or uh, that kind of need in your uh, project, then yeah, you can definitely try this. So for us in product design, we do not require any segmentation or as detection kind of thing. So we are not using it right now. We may try it someday. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. And the chat is now open for questions. Do we have any questions? All right, then I guess we do not have any questions for now. Uh, you can reach out to us over Slack or if you need us, need any answers from us. And I guess we can end our call here. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that um, the the method they use the NN transformers uh, works best uh, for three D images, medical images. Yeah. So their goal was to get the information. Uh, if you consider three D image, then their goal was to get the DT, uh, information from one uh, lower. So imagine going along the z axis, mm -hmm. about uh, along the height. So their goal is to get the information from one level to another. If you uh, imagine a perfect sphere, then uh, if you try to uh, just take the images at every layer and then you try to segment it then you would see a growing circle and uh, since the circle is growing with its uh, center at the center of the image uh, it uh, so the circle from a previous layer the to the circle of the next layer would be just marginally larger in its radius so the uh, connection between the the connection between the down sampling layers and the transformer blocks with the self attestation helps them because it retains the information from one layer to another. So it uh -huh. should be good for uh, 3D images segmentation. Okay, so for us, we, we are not dealing with 
um, I don't think as of now we are dealing with 3D images, yeah. but it's basically 2D, um, but with very You are in the implant identification? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, if, you, if you come around such a large data set, because I think the Synapse and ACDC are also larger, quite large in size, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can try out uh, uh, taking frames of the videos if they are giving you some rotation or... Um, I'm not sure how you could convert a 2D problem into a 3D, but uh, yeah, it definitely helps for a 3D one. Uh, and for 2D, uh, mm -hmm. from the initial one, I think the... This, uh, 2D or, uh, I mean, video or image set? Hello? Uh, you will lost your audio. But yeah... What I was saying is an in unit was working better for 2D window patches than 3D volumetric patches. So I think you can try that for blood identification. Also an in unit. Okay, 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 got it. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right, uh, if you have any more questions, you can reach out to us on Slack. We are happy to help. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.